What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and to follow up to our tier list we did earlier today, I want to start breaking down some of these first E5 heroes that you want to go for, and talk about some of the pretty optimal ways to build these heroes, what artifacts to chase, and what stones to go after, and as you guys see from the title, we're going to start off with our main girl, Eloise, because of course she's just the easiest pick, she is the most dominant hero, is it the one we're going to pick? Probably not, because we've already done it before, and I like experience different things at the beginning but overall she is a monster of a hero the way her active and her counterattacks work with her scarred souls is what makes her so so strong she has a good chance to counterattack however you'll notice she has an innate 60 percent chance to block she doesn't have built-in damage reduction which is very important to note but she by default has a 60 percent chance to block now you want to get this number as close to 100 as possible, maybe even more, because what happens is the stat called precision is basically the counter to block. The higher your precision, the less chance the enemy has to block. If you really want to go all in, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, she does have some pretty cool abilities here. Whenever a hero is slain, all enemies lose 15% precision. That does help her block. For six rounds, and Eloise has a 100% chance to get one layer of Phantom Shadow. This basically says next time Scarred Soul is inflicted, one stack of Phantom Shadow will be consumed to increase the damage of that Scarred Soul by 50%. I don't know if I said Scarred Soul properly before. If I didn't, my bad. Now, her last passive is one of the most important. Upon blocking an attack, it deals 400% attack damage to three random enemies and inflicts that Scarred Soul. Scarred Soul is going to deal damage equal to 3% of the target's max HP, up to 1,500% of her attacks. So you're going to want to attack as well and restores LOI's Eloise <laughs> HP by 25% of that damage dealt. So yeah, as a core hero, she is very, very strong. Very good survivability, all that funness. Uh, you'll notice on our Eloise, we like running a lot of block just to make sure she guarantees that block every single time. That block is probably one of the most important stats we have. Now, gearing wise, of course, you're going to want to go for like a resident suit of armor as soon as possible. However, they are very gem intensive to build. If we jump on over to the forge right here, or sorry, my bad, the gray dwarves blessing, uh, getting her to at least a six star orange set of gear. And then of course, a ranger set of gear will be the most optimal. It'll give her the best stats possible. Uh, if you can get her into a resident suit of gear and and give her those bonuses those are going to be great all damage reduction all damage dealt some extra a, a lot of extra attack i should say that's really what you want to go for but they are a little bit expensive spend your gems wisely now next up here i want to talk about her stones uh typically i'll try to run a block stone of some sort that's either a block hp stone or block attack stone. I personally prefer the block attack stone for her route because remember, the scarred souls are dealing damage based on a cap of her attack, and then she'll be healing that much HP. So the more damage you do, the more you heal, the more HP you have, the longer you can survive, but you're not healing for as much. So keep that in mind when you are building your Eloise. And then the first artifact I would go for is a golden crown. Even just a baseline golden crown will give her some amazing stats. If you do get it upgraded, it's very good. I do see a lot of people instead picking an Augustus Magic Ball and AMB instead because it has the additional block chance. I don't necessarily like that as much. It does, if you do go for some sort of block. Here, I would then in turn go for like an attack, attack, skill damage, attack, attack, holy damage, or just a raw attack, attack stone. The extra block from here is really wasted and you could go for more attack. And you want to go for more attack once you get Augustus Magiball upgraded to at least glittery because that's when you're going to start reducing the damage taken based on your attack. But I do believe crown is the better pick for her overall so keep that in mind as far as enables go typically i don't really care about her speed that often so i stay away from the growth i like just running mightiness enabling uh for e2 lethal fight back or vitality are good vitality is going to give her a little bit more healing if you're having some trouble surviving you might want to spec into that otherwise getting a little extra damage when the enemy has higher current hp than her that is fine you're going to want to run control purify a good majority of the time because if you're cc'd you cannot do those 
counterattacks, which are pretty much all of her damage. Uh, if you're going up against something that doesn't have anything CCing you, you can always use Mark Purify, Dot Purify, Attribute Reduction Purify. If you're really going against something you don't care, you can survive on, you go for the additional attack. And then if you need a little bit more survivability and there's no CC, you can go with Resilience. However, that is... 15% of missing HP. So the lower HP you have, the more it'll heal, heal for. But if you're specking more into attack, it's not going to do that much. And of course, lastly, Unbending Will. Usually I stay away from Balance Strike on her because her active ability doesn't really do all that much. I mean, it does some damage, but her basic attack doesn't heal her what all, at all. Her basic attack, literally, she just runs up and taps the hero. That's it. There's no special basic attack. She just attack damage hit. And she's done. So Unbending Will is the way to go. Now, once you get up to E5, you'll be able to start V4ing this hero. You should not really even need any imprints on this hero to get C-Land 20 done. But if you do, you can get some of that taken care of. And the really nice thing, too, is she has a limited skin blushing tipsy, which means... If you come on over and check out these chests here, the chests that you can get from all the events, her skin is right here. So you can get those additional stats very, very easily, which is another reason why I really enjoy this hero is her skin is a very easy one to get. And it has some really crazy, awesome stats on it. 5% damage reduction, 6% attack and 8% HP, all very solid stats for hero. Plus, you know, looks pretty cool. I'd say it looks pretty cool. I like this one personally. Uh, so that's the build for her. Uh, the only other thing we really need to talk about is what monster to go for if you are building her. And really, there's only one pick in my opinion. Nope, not you. <laughs> I saw the red, the Phoenix. Like she doesn't necessarily synergize with the Phoenix. However, when pushing Sea Land or doing PVE content to make sure you're getting this uh, buff for burning enemies, what she can do, especially in Sea Land, is she can build up a six star Deathsworn. And when Deathsworn dies, he burns all enemies. He puts a burn dot on them, which is awesome. Uh, technically, the attack does the same thing as well. Uh, it doesn't say burn, but it does. And this will give you that synergy, even if the, I mean, the whole point of Death Sworn is just to die in round one. When he dies, burns all enemies for 15 rounds. That is the entire battle you have to worry about, which is another really cool synergy that shadow heroes have that others don't if you want to go for the Phoenix. And then lastly, when it comes to your guild tech, of course, you want to go into ranger tech and then you're going to want to start prioritizing some of these anti-class guild techs as well so that's eloise for you she's hands down the best hero you can build as the first e5 in my opinion still there's a couple runners up ithqua penny they're they're pretty much up there too maybe even ticks but she has the easiest sea land 20 that then you can move on to other projects let me know what you guys think hopefully you guys enjoy this one hopefully it helps you guys if you're starting your free to play account with us this week i'll see you guys next time